Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Chatterbox Podcast. Today, me and Bad Boy Beeman, we return with another episode. And yeah, Bad Boy, how are we doing? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Some stuff to be discussed today for sure. Bro, let's get into it, guys. Um, you know, we we've had uh, the whole Aiden, the bum, Ross, and the King KSI. They've been going back and forth. Um, which of course we had like the whole Misfits Thirteen saga. Um, how did you feel about the Misfits Thirteen saga? Like the whole bum I, friend. I think I think right for me personally when I was watching it on the zone, um, which you know paid subscription, I actually thought that. The fight was just sort of like one of the fighters was just getting out the ring, and I was thinking, "Why? Why is he getting out the ring? Who was it? Yodi Gang? Am I right? Or, or am I wrong? It was Yodi Gang. Yodi Gang Craig versus yeah. uh, Craig, Craig, yeah. yeah. So Yodi, it looked like Yodi Gang was just getting out, and then it come up with a warning across the screen. I was like, "Oh shit, this is serious." I jumped straight into a Twitter space, and um, there was people in there who were at the events, like reporting on the things going on, people that were outside and stuff. And I thought, "Oh my god, this is serious, man." So like. Bomb threats, like you could see on the TV still, the like armed forces were there, like doing a sweep of the whole area. And I just thought, like, I praying that everyone was safe at the time. Like, yeah, yeah, for me, it was a bit of a weird one because I wanted to watch the event, but I made a mistake in um, the night before. I basically slept early, therefore, I woke up early during the day of fight day. Um, and then I went to sleep. Sorry, early. sorry, sorry, sorry. So let's let me just get this straight. You missed a misfits event. Yeah, bro. Fuck it. Yeah. Nah, listen, I, I, let's I, just I... say this now. Like that. That ain't the fan. I want to know who you are and what you've done with the fan because you're obviously an imposter. Bro, bro. Okay, okay. Listen, bro. All right. So I hold my hand up. I missed a misfits event. I was pissed. Okay, because KSI was in the Twitter space during the whole. Uh, Oh yeah, situation. you slept through. You slept through, man. I was in the Twitter space when he come in. I was sending you messages on WhatsApp. I was trying to call you. Sandy was trying to call you. you. Had about five people trying to hit you up. Like get in this space now. Like believe it or not, right? That space, right? Jan was hosting it. He had like three people in there, and KSI joined. And he said within seconds, within seconds. Thousands of people turned up to that space. He said, I didn't know what to do. Like, obviously, Jan's head fell off. But KSI, very humble guy, was in the space talking about it, hoping that everyone was safe, and obviously wanting updates from people who were in the space at the event. And they were giving him updates, which was cool, man. So I woke up during, like the, uh, the following morning. I was like, okay, I'm not going to check Twitter because there's going to be spoilers. So I went into my The Zone app. Um, by the way, guys, if you haven't got your The Zone subscription... TheZone.com forward slash Misfits Boxing or TheZone.com forward slash B Dave. Sorry, just a little plug in there. Um, so you know, I went to my DeZone app, um, and I was confused because when I saw that Yadi Gang and Quay Quay like jumped out of the ring, like they, you know, they left the ring. I was thinking, hang on a minute, like, that's what's gone on? And then I had to go into the Twitter app, and then I saw the spoilers. You know, most wanted not making the walk. Um. Chris Sevilla winning his fight. By the way, what a dickhead Chris Sevilla is, man. What... I know, all this stuff, what was that about? Absolute like, disrespect for the whole event. The platform, them, they've allowed him to fight on their show, and he disrespected them. Like, the, the calling it a clown show, you know, F you and all this to the cameras. Like, to have a little bit of respect for the people who are paying your wage. It's simple yeah. as that. Even if you don't respect them, hey, they're paying your wage. They're allowing you yeah. to fight. Without that fight, you ain't getting paid. Idiot. Yeah. And, and just I, I, to put it out there, right? If the fight ever happens between him and Idris Vago, I've got Idris Vago breaking his body. He's gonna put him down in round two with a body breaker. Facts, bro. That's that's why they call him the body breaker. That's why they call you know him that, the body breaker. You know um, yeah, so I, I just think it's weird. And I think moving forward, Mams will um make changes, you know, following you know, after Misfits 13. For me, I don't want to see Chris Sevilla back on Misfits unless it's an Idris Virgo fight and, you know, Idris Virgo can do his thing, break uh, Avila's body. Um, and then we had the whole stuff most wanted. People have got their opinions on it. Um, you know, so I don't want to make this episode all about that situation. But, yeah, it was definitely disappointing, bad boy. Oh, it was definitely disappointing. Listen, 
I, I've got no qualms with Most Wanted. I like the lad. Right, We started off on a bit of a bad foot. I realised he was just a troll and a bit of banter. But listen, at the end of it, massive respect for the guy from a Twitter space making it onto Misfits and then being able to headline. It was a lot to handle for a young guy who, um, you know, the pressure got him. And I feel like the interview with Fred actually showed his true character, the way he was talking, the way he presented himself, it felt like he was still in the middle of like a, an anxiety attack at that moment. He couldn't get his words out, didn't know what to say. Um, we'll just go straight into it then. Obviously, you meant to be in the main event tonight in the 2v1 match. You decided not to walk out. What was the reason behind that? Yeah, I just couldn't walk. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't do nothing. Was it just the nerves, the nerves getting to you? Yes. Yes. Mams is obviously pissed off at me, understandably, but... Where do you... Oh, I'm going to wrap it up in a second, because I understand it's quite... It's very difficult. Um, what do you think is next for you, though? <laughs> We're going to wrap it up there. I don't, I don't want you to be upset on camera. And I, I don't know, man. I just feel, I feel like... I feel sorry for him. Um, and I hope that he can go and put the work in. Which, by the way, it looks like he has been putting the work in. He's been sparring with people. There's photos going out, videos going out of him actually working with people from the small creator boxing scene. So hopefully he's able to turn it around and actually, you know, come back and prove to Mams and and the whole Misfits community that, you know, he is worth the you know the bet and the gamble to get him back on. But it's a long road ahead. But bad boy, I can also see why people are frustrated because at the beginning we were sold the two versus one concept. Right, we were sold this, you know, this new concept that Mams has introduced onto Misfits. Um, that was like the main event. That was like the unique selling point of the card, you know. So I can definitely see people's frustrations. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, he didn't get in there. He didn't get in there. I don't think we can force anyone to get in the ring. Um, you know, th there's whole, there's another like layer to the, it. With... The, the, the layer to it with for me though, that I think is worse, by the way, is yeah, okay, most wanted had an anxiety attack and didn't get in the ring, but whatever the hell evil hero did was worse, in my opinion. He got in the ring, didn't really get hit, and just went down and stayed down. I was like, I'm not getting back up. He took the easy payday, he took the easy road. I've seen. So many journeymen do this on white collar boxing events where they turn up, get it with a little body shot and take a knee. They'll be looking out to the crowd, giving a cheeky wink as if to say, I'm not really hurt, but I'm going down. And they get the payday and they go home. And that's what it felt like Evil Hero did. Um, and honestly, I think that was worse than what most wanted did. Yeah. Um, let, let's talk about Aiden Ross, right? So obviously, the same time as Misfits 13, uh, Aiden, that bum, that snake, that rat. Um, you know, he had his own boxing event. Uh, I'm not going to say the name. I'm not going to promote his shitty promotion. But, you know, he had his own shitty event on kick. The funny thing is, is he's been talking all month. Okay. My promotion is going to outdo Misfits. We're going to outwork Misfits. We're going to get more views than Misfits. Do you know something, bad boy? Misfits 13. And this is a fact, by the way. Misfits 13 done 600 thousand uh views right live uh concurrent viewers on the the zone app which of course is behind the paywall okay you need your the zone subscription to watch the event six hundred thousand aiden ross and his whatever clown show he's got going on he's he had a hundred and thirteen thousand live on kick which was free which was free so i got a message for you aiden next time you want to compare your, yourself to KSI. You want to compare yourself to the King KSI. At least have the numbers to back it up. Because the way you've come at Misfits, the way you've come out at KSI, the way you've come out at MAMS, right? You is disrespectful, bro. It's disrespectful, okay? There's a reason why KSI is successful in boxing. There's a reason why Misfits is successful. Because they've built themselves up, right? Misfits are on their 14th event. Okay, they're on, we're going to get Misfits 14 in a month. You've had two events and you're this fucking cocky and arrogant and just your mind is all over the place, bro. Like he, Aiden Ross's mind is all over the place. And I don't well, get what he gets. I, I will say this on the matter as well, right? He's obviously 
like worried about the numbers the misfits are bringing in. He's obviously trying all the dirty tricks in the book. Obviously, there was talk about Aidan Ross offering most wanted money not to go into his fight. That's been a big talking point, which I'm not really going to touch on because I don't believe that most wanted took the deal. But more to show the character of what Aidan Ross is willing to do to try and prove he's better than Misfits. And he was talking to one of the main event fighters from Misfits 13 prior to the fight, offering this guy money and a kick deal to not turn up, not go into the ring on the fight. So this just shows how much of a threat Misfits truly are to someone like Aiden. They wouldn't be offering this kind of money and these kind of deals to a main event fighter unless he truly felt like Misfits was a threat. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I I just think the guy and his audience are weird. Um, there's rumor. Well, it's a fact actually. The person that swatted Misfits Thirteen with the bomb threat, that the disgusting piece of shit, right? That done it was from Aiden's community. So Aiden has allowed his community. You know, he, he kind of like co-signed it, right? Like all the doxing, the bomb threats, the racism that he's allowed to go on in his community. He's allowed it. He's condoned that behavior. And then, which led to, you know, a bomb threat, right? A bomb threat. And then, again, instead of taking accountability, yo, sorry, guys, it's my community, you know? Oh, it's got nothing to do with me. Why is everyone blaming me? Well, of course, you you know, you, you've condoned this behavior, you know? I get what you're saying. I think, though, it's and I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk with an open mind here as a content creator myself. I... I certainly wouldn't be held accountable for something someone from my community said. However, however, and I will say this, I've seen Aiden talking on stream about doxing people. I've seen him promoting this kind of behaviour. But for me, I've always promoted quite the opposite. You know, be respectful to even the people that we don't really like. And and obviously in return, people will sh or should show respect back to you. But what I see from Aiden and his lot is um, very immature behaviour, um, almost like Aiden sort of living in some sort of bubble where he's allowed to behave like a child and get away with it. And obviously he's got a team behind him, a management team, you know, a promotion team and such, because he's a massive name, but he's just nowhere near as big as KSI or Misfits at the moment. And I doubt he ever will be if he continues with the childish behaviour. Yeah. Look, for me, I just, I, I, I don't respect someone. Um, Obviously, I don't know if some of you guys know. This guy literally went on stream and um, he played like a, you know, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it on this podcast, but um, there was like false, uh, like, screenshots of like messages, you know, uh, that someone had made. And he played it on his stream and he's like, yo, this fan guy is a pedophile, right? There's literally a clip that I put onto my Twitter. Nice. So the this this KSI fan is a fucking pedophile, bro. Who's a pedophile? Wow. And that's literally him. That's 4K. That is insane. Of course he is. So he's encouraged like his his fan base to like go after me and you know um spread these further spread these false allegations. So for me. I would never, ever, ever respect someone like that, man. I really won't, you know? But again, it just shows what kind of level he stoops to for promotion, for publicity, for clicks and engagements. He didn't even do a single background check as to whether or not the claims against you were real or fake. He just saw it and spoke his mind, and he literally said the words, that leads him into a legal battle that he will 100% lose if he carries on behaving that way. If he'd done that against somebody else who's got a lot of money behind him, guess what? He's getting sued to the high heavens. And one day, somebody's going to attack him in that manner. If he attacks them verbally with false allegations, they're going to sue the shit out of him. And he's going to feel that. It's going to hit his bank account real hard. You might think he's got all the money in the world at the moment. Well, guess what? Somebody out there has got more money and you will chat shit about them at some point, Aiden. And they're going to sue the shit out of you. And they'll tie up all of your assets. They'll tie up all of your money. They'll freeze all your bank accounts until the court case is done. And guess what? You'll have nothing. You'll be walking around in Primark Clubber, praying and begging on the streets for your next meal. 
Yeah, man, I think... Uh, did, did you see the clip of KSI um, where he was like, it's on site whenever I see Aiden? It was on the What's Good podcast. I have seen the clip, yes, and for you guys watching, we'll play it for you now. Like, with me and Aiden, I'd mm. slap him in the face. Okay. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, I'd slap him. What? What's like? Bro, just this don't beef, get me fucking this started. Has anything not... happened other than the boxing stuff? It's, no, it's all started from it's the boxing just stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so like that's even to the point where I don't even want to go and kick now because of mm. Aiden. I don't want to be associated with that platform or anything to do with him. I just think he's a bit of a dickhead. Like, yes, you know, the competition's good. He's got his own boxing thing going on. Happy days. You're like, we're not there to like disturb that. We're just doing our thing as well. But when you've got <sighs> allegedly yeah. his fan base um doxing our event and making it, you know, mm -hmm. slowing it down for two years, mm -hmm. two years, two two hours, uh, making people have to leave the venue, having police come in, have to check around to see if there's a yeah. actually in there. Bro, be smart, be real. Police and bomb squad, they got to do their jobs, bro. Yeah, so pretty much like as you guys have just seen, um, KSI, you know, he's like, yo, whenever I see him, it's on site, bro. Re like. Okay, so you've got the Aiden Ross, you've got the Jack Doherty's. Bro, they think because they've got security, nothing can happen to them in real life, bro. Like, I'll tell you now, right? And I'm not even like a violent guy. I don't go around pretending that I'm this big bad person. But when I, if I ever see this guy, bro, like, just for the personal shit that he said about me and done to me, right? I'm, I'm fucking him up, bro. Like, straight up. You know, like, never mind KSI and what he's about to do to him, but. Man, I, I, I just like, I've got like a deep, deep, deep hatred for people like this, you know? So what what people don't realize, and I'm saying people, like a lot of Americans, especially when it comes to the content creation world, they don't realize like in England, we don't need security guards. Yeah, we don't need people to back us up. We don't need a crew of people behind us. We don't need that, right? If we see you in person, it's on site. That's always the way it has been always the way it will be we grew up in a way in which we had to deal like that right and ksi the same right this guy's probably grown up happened to have fights left and right all over the place right he didn't have a team of people behind him or a security guard to protect him whereas aiden ross seems to feel like it's it's there's a, it's not just him though it's a group of them like you see them all on yeah. kick doing live streams the tarly's one of them neon's another aiden ross and there's many more that i can talk on have these security guards to protect them. They cause the problems. And then when someone gets in the face, they need the security guards to step in. What you need to do is grow up here, man up and fight your own battles. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, I agree. But guys, I'm going to wrap it up for today. Uh, it's been Bad Boy Beeman and myself, the fan. Uh, we're going to continue uploading regularly. So yeah, stay tuned, guys. And also, guys, make sure you smash that like button. Drop a comment below and let us know what you think about Aiden Ross and his petty childish behavior. Subscribe and turn on notifications because like the fan said, we've got plenty more uploads coming soon. Until next time, guys, see you later.